Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and we're delighted to have you back today. And we've got another wonderful guest on the show, a, a, a very fun guy, and I think you're really going to Brandon Steiner of Steiner Sports Marketing. So let's welcome Brandon to the show. Hello, good day. How are you? Thanks for thanks for having me, and uh, glad to join you on a beautiful day. Yes, I'm glad to have you here, Brandon, and uh, I'm excited. And I got to say, I I really enjoyed your book. You got to have balls. A pretty uh, a fun read, and and got a lot out of it. And uh, and you're going to share some of the experiences and tell your story about kind of how this Jewish kid from Brooklyn uh, came from a pretty poor background, from what I saw in the book, and hooked up with the New York Yankees and Notre Dame and built an empire. So. Why don't I start off with a question I ask every guest on the show, Brandon? Who are you and what do you do? Well, first, thanks. Uh, thanks for the kind words. Uh, Empire, we're on our way. We're trying to build the company up, you know, to match up to a lot of, you know, unbelievable fan base out there. But first, you got to have balls is a, my mother's favorite line. And, the you know, the book is ded dedicated to her. And it was always about, you know, nerve and being fearless, not being afraid, and, and, and going to the nth degree. So, and certainly, you know, that's a big part of who I am is, you know, where you're raised uh, and where you were brought up, which obviously the streets of Brooklyn is an education in itself. Anybody from New York City or from Brooklyn will tell you that you get a double degree just when you get out of Brooklyn and when you live in Brooklyn and make it alive to 18 years old. Because, you know, it's a lot of things going to happen just on your way to school. It's an interesting place. But, uh, you know, Steiner Sports is, you know, it's our 25th anniversary. Very blessed, very grateful. I have some great partners along the way. So, uh, you know, the ability to do a deal with the Yankees is truly a blessing, one of the great brands on the planet. And uh, certainly uh, working with Notre Dame and working with Derek Jeter and then Eli Manning and Mariana Rivera, um, some of the names, just to name a few, are, are, have certainly been huge, you know, in building our brand and, Really being able to create quality products. So our company is based on two comp We have two companies really. It's the, the athlete marketing where we market athletes and we get different companies, athletes for golf tournaments and speaking engagements and uh, all kinds of different promotions. And then we have a licensing and collectible company where we create products. We have an MLB license uh, and their authentication process. So we'll, you know, do photos and making of bats and it's a kind of a replication of of true collect we also sell game use collectibles as well so the actual basis from the field of yankee stadium Derek cheater's jersey that he wears in the game is all stuff that we sell so that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview uh, we sell to many stores around the country and around the world uh, we sell to customers to go to our website sirensports.com and then uh, we sell to a lot of web partners and other customers around the country who will resell our product online so a whole bunch of different things going on at Steiner. We have a great store, the Yankee Stadium, and uh, some other places at, at the Barclays Center and in New Jer in, uh, Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, and then uh, a, little, a nice little store over at Mass Square Garden as well. That's great, Brandon. It sounds pretty exciting stuff you've done in your in your short life. So, <laughs> you know, I haven't I listen. I, I haven't hit my I haven't hit my stride yet, but we're getting there. Well, good for you. So let's talk a little bit. Let's go back to starting Steiner Sports. And you did everything from the restaurant business to delivering newspapers to whatever. But how does someone go from dirt poor in Brooklyn to knowing Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera and Eli Manning and all these famous athletes? How does one get from point A to point B? It's funny. A lot of athletes say that, too, shaking their head. Going, How did you get in this room? But, uh, you know, I you know, it's based on a couple of things. I talk a lot about all that in the book. It's really not that much of a sports book as it's kind of a how-to and how this all came about. But I'm a big I'm a big value proposition guy. I think that you know, wherever you are versus wherever you want to be, it's not so much about what you want to do, but it's more about listening and seeing what the market lends and what the people you're dealing with need and then match up to your, your trades and your strengths and try to see if you can provide something that people want. And I think I did that, you know, at 12 years old when I had my paper route, frankly. I'll tell you a quick story. But, you know, I'm delivering the paper in Brooklyn. You got 29 dailies. You got 37 Sundays. 
even a poor kid, by the way, that was already my third job at 12, but I was like, how do I get this paper out, you know, built? I mean, there was a contest. Whoever sold, opened up the most accounts in one particular month, got a box of candy bars. So I'm going up and down the street, and I start knocking on doors, and in the middle of my route were a bunch of these apartment buildings, you know, six, seven stories with all these. So, wow, if I could just land a bunch of these apartments in the building, it would take me no time to hit one or two floors, five or six apartments on each floor. So I knock on this door, and this older lady answered the uh, door. She's probably about 65, 70, pretty old. And she's like, I said, man, would you have to get the paper from me? She said, no, I get it from the newsstand on the corner. I said, yeah, but it's eight cents there, and if you get it from me, it's eight cents. So her response was, yeah, but then I got to tip you. So I went home. I was, like, really aggravated because I hadn't done particularly well that day. It's my first really introduction to knocking on doors and trying to get people to buy something. And my mom said to me, Brandon, what do the people need besides your newspaper? A great value. So I went back and started knocking on the doors, and I happened to hit the same older woman's door, and I said, ma'am, you're a little older. I don't really see you going out on the street. When it's really cold out and it's rainy or it's really, really hot or a heat wave during the summer, I don't think it's a good idea for you to have to go to the store two or three times a week to get milk and bagels. And I'll tell you what I'll do. Every Wednesday and Sunday, I'm going to bring you milk, and on Sunday, I'm going to bring you milk and bagels. I'll never be later than 7 a.m. because I know you get up early. You'll have your paper right on time. You'll never be late. If I'm late, you don't have to pay. But he said, you would do that for me? I said, yeah, I don't want you to go out when it's blizzarding out and snowing, whatever. And that was really my first introduction. And I went up, by the way, to 139 dailies and 179 Sundays. And even for a 12-year-old, that was a nice little pretty penny I was making. And I quadrupled my revenue. Now, granted, it's a paper route. We've all had paper routes, many people. But that's my first introduction to value proposition. You know, it's not what you want to sell. It's what the people need to buy. What value can you provide to someone and what they need? And that was the first thing in my book about the what else factor. You know, it's not just about the newspaper. We know people read newspapers. But what else can you provide? And there I was, this bagel store right on King's Highway that I just had to walk by. Put that asset to use where there was nice milk. There was all this, this whole those whole refrigerator milk, and they had the bagels. And sure enough, so, you know, obviously I won the box of candy bars. But I think we're, we all can relate to this story, though, because we're all sitting with something that's probably pretty good. But are we really grateful and using everything we can around, with our customers? Are we really examining what our customers need? And using everything we can around that product to match up with what the customer needs. And that's how you can grow and expand your business. And I think the value proposition is exactly the concept I used 30 years later when I started Steiner Sports 25 years ago, which is, you know, what are people really looking for? What do they really need? Not what I want to sell, which originally was just trying to sell them athletes as opposed to trying to figure out what customers needed to buy. That's a great story, and I, I think it really the le- the takeaway there is see the world through the eyes of buyers, and and what do they need, and what do they care about? Like like you said, the older lady, she doesn't want to go out and buy milk and bagels, and you can bring it to her, and I think that's a great a great lesson there. Absolutely. So let's yeah yeah great. You also did a deal with Notre Dame, which happens to be my alma mater. So uh, yeah, that happened. Well, I just done the Yankee Steiner deal, which was, you know, to me, you know, a lot of people when they when something really great comes, and, and I I do think you should celebrate when you have a success, you should celebrate. But a lot of people, a lot of people, create this false sense of uh, celebration. You know, it's like, I mean, do we ever really get to ultimately where we want to go? I mean, there's always room to grow, do more. So certainly, we had done the Yankee Steiner deal, and I was in a celebratory state, but. My mind, very similar to Michael Jordan, he won his first championship trophy. The first thing he thought the next day is, I want another one. So as soon as I had done this Yankee Steiner deal, which was amazing, and I'm very grateful that the Yankees trusted me and created this partnership with uh, Randy Levine, Lon Shrews, Brian Casper, it was great. But immediately I'm like, what else? I'm like the next best brand I could think of would be Notre Dame. It's just a huge, huge brand that's out of the box. Nobody would ever imagine that Steiner would do something with Notre Dame. So sure enough, I start calling Notre Dame up. And, you know, a Brooklyn kid, Jewish kid from Brooklyn and Notre Dame, I'm not sure that's, you know, you could have probably talked yourself out of that deal a hundred times before you even made the call. But the fact of the matter is I had a nice Irish Catholic 
uh, one of my employees call over there and get the meeting. We flew down to Notre Dame. I waited seven hours for that meeting. And I went with my gut. You know, I was sitting there. I noticed there was a lot of signage in the stadium, as you know. Not a lot of marketing promotion. It's probably as bare bone, old school sports and at a college as we could see in modern day. So when I finally met with the decision maker, Boo Corrigan, I said, you know, Boo, you guys are pretty conservative around here. And I remember I'm thinking Yankee Steiner, huge, you know, huge deal. I think I think we should start off something really, really small and try to come up with some really, really great quality and start a relationship off small. And he was like, yeah, exactly what I was thinking. Because, you know, it's pretty conservative around here, and I, I think people would kibosh it. So anyway, we got some, well, some time forward. They came up to our offices. You know, we have a 45,000-square-foot warehouse. They saw the things we were manufacturing and doing. And I remember getting an email from about 24 months later asking me if we could figure out every which way because she's getting a lot of pressure from people around the school to expand the relationship and how we can make it bigger. But you may think how that relates to you, but everybody's thinking about new products and new ideas and how it moves the needles. Nobody wants to move on anything unless it has a lot of zeros. But the reality is that some of the greatest ideas, some of the best ideas, start off small. And it's okay to start small. It's okay to think small. So, and I think in the Notre Dame case, I was really glad that I listened to my gut. And it was okay. I knew that that first year or two wasn't going to be a real revenue generating, you know, move my income statement. But I knew that the potential, if we did the right thing, we did good quality products, teaming up with quality and a great organization like Notre Dame would be a win. And, uh, you know, it's okay to start small. And certainly the Notre Dame deal really followed that suit. Yeah, I, I like that, and I think that there's a lesson there for everyone is that, you know, just start a relationship. It doesn't have to be big at the beginning, but just get, you know, get things going, and that's great. I'll tell you a, a funny story of my own. About 12 years ago, I had the opportunity to sit on an airplane with George Steinbrenner, and he, my wife's a big Yankee fan, and he talked to my wife on the phone, and uh, he, I, we were talking, and I mentioned I went to Notre Dame, and he said, Notre Dame is the one college that's more like the Yankees than any other. He just felt the tradition, and just it was just a, he, he thought the affinity between the Yankees and Notre Dame was, was very large. So it kind of makes sense that you turned there. Well, Mr. Steinbrenner was unbelievable, and he blessed our deal with the Yankees. But in, in 1979, I was up at Syracuse where I went to school. Love that alma mater, by the way, and very involved with that school. Well, George came up and spoke. So, you know, I'm in the first row. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. love the Yankees. And, frankly, I love George Steinbrenner. I was a big fan of his always. So I got my Yankee cap out on the first row, and he was the first one. Now, I live with a college football Division One player, but he was the first one to get up and say, you know, this sports thing is a business. I was like, wow, I never heard that before. You know, people forget, like, the sports industry is such a young business really about 20 years old. I mean, it's older than that, but, you know, it really didn't start mature until the early, mid-90s, you know, to any level. And I'm not even sure it's mature yet. But certainly, you know, him coming up in 1979 and, you know, just emphatically talking about you got to run your sports teams like a business was just almost like a foreign language. And so that was amazing. I got to spend some good time with Mrs. Steinbrenner up in his suite and, uh, spending some time watching some games and ultimately doing the Yankee Steiner deal was, was his blessing. But certainly, uh, Randy Levine, the president of Latros, were huge in helping me set that, you know, setting up Yankee Steiner, and they were the visionaries. Good. Now, tell us about what happened with um, the Yankees building a new stadium and what you did with the old stadium. Well, you know, we knew that that old stadium was like one of the coolest stadiums on the planet. Whether you love the Yankees or hate them, there's something really special about that place. You know, starting with Babe Ruth and Garrick and all the great Yankees, uh, Rizzuto and Yogi and Whitey and Winfield. And so, you know, I really wanted to get my hands around that stadium. It was a jewel, you know, and certainly from a collectability standpoint, my vision about it was to break that stadium up into hundreds of thousands of pieces and make sure there was something for every Yankee fan. So like when you go on SteinerSports.com, you will see there's a whole Yankee Stadium collection, a whole line of product from, you know, $29 to thousands of dollars if you want to buy a locker or a uh, ticket booth or anything like that. And we're selling that stuff. So, you know, that's kind of the deal. I mean, the city owned the old stadium, so the Yankees and I, we partnered up together, and, and I laid out probably about $16.5 million to go buy that stadium so that we, we would take it apart and 
share with uh, you know probably the greatest fan base in all of sports, which is Yankee fans. And uh, so far, so good. You know, we've had a lot of luck. People love the product. Uh, it certainly represents you know some of the greatness that's you know the Yankee brand is just all about winning and greatness. So it's been a really good project for me. It was definitely uh, one of the bigger projects that I took on. And, um, we, you know, we've worked through it and had a lot of different twists and turns. But it's been really, really favorable. Great, Brandon. Uh, it's pretty interesting how you buy a stadium and, and break it up. Uh, interesting concept. Bricks, uh, dirt, grass, the legal kind, um, freeze. Um, you know, you got quite a bit that goes into a stadium that you can kind of take apart and buy. And you'd be surprised some of the things that people will buy. Now, Brandon, in your book, and let me again mention it, it's You Gotta Have Balls by Brandon Steiner. You have a lot of lessons for budding entrepreneurs, younger people looking to start a business, uh, get going and create something. And I'd like you to share some of your key tips for those people who are just getting started. Well, the one thing I want to say is, you know, I always tell young entrepreneurs, is it's it, having a great idea is huge, but there's a lot more to running a business than coming up with a great idea. So it's important to understand how to run a business besides assuming you have a good idea. So understand the accounting and the finance part is something that always escapes many entrepreneurs. Uh, and obviously the marketing and promotion usually kind of, kind of runs parallel with that. Um, the second thing I would say is, you know, it's about commitment. You know, so we starting a business you're not trying to find passion you need to first make a commitment and your commitment will lead you to passion okay not the other way around and then time management is critical I think that you know you've got to manage your time and make sure that you're um, using the you know because time is critical especially in the beginning when you don't have a lot of employees it's huge so I think you know managing your time and making sure that you're dealing with quality clients quality people talent acquisition People you hire, whether it be one or a hundred, you'd rather better off hiring one hundred, one unbelievable, hundred percent great person than four crappy employees. I'd rather have one great person than four crappy ones. And you know, I feel the same way a lot of times with clients too. It's you know, when you're getting started, it's hard because you're trying to just get started. You almost feel like you have to take any kind of business in to get things going. But you know, again, I'd rather have one great client than three you know, horrible clients that don't appreciate your services. More than likely, they're not getting you paid, and you know they're not they're not communicating. You're not feeling too good about yourself. And those are some of the you know some of the, the, the short characteristics of you know when you go into a new business and you're getting started. And uh, you know it's it's commitment. Everything starts with a commitment. You know people are always looking for that passion. You know the passion about this and that. And you know I, I listen. Passion is important, but it, it comes from commitment. You know show me someone who's really successful with their business. And I'll show you someone who's fully committed to start. And then along the way, they found the passion, coupled up with their commitment, which is what got them to where they are. You know, that's interesting. And I'll just tell a story of another company I interviewed on here was Zappos. And it was a story of that shoe company, and they were sold to Amazon for like $2 billion. But when you look at the history of, Amaz uh, of Zappos, in the early days, they didn't know how they were going to make payroll. I mean, they almost went out of business at the very beginning. Everyone just looks at them and they're so successful, but they don't realize how hard it is getting started in this. Well, you when bring up a point. You know, failing is huge. And, you know, yeah. it's one thing is, you know, be prepared to fail, uh, you know, as part of the process. You know, you may, everything you're thinking of, you, you know, it may take some adjustments. You got to have balls. The reason why I wrote that book is I'm sitting on the beach about two years ago and I'm reading the Zappos book. And I could not believe how transparent Tony was about the times he was lost, the times when he screwed up, the times that his ego got the best of him. It was just, it, the book really kind of took me down, and, and I was kind of going through some struggles here at Steiner, and I'm like, you know something? I think I'm going to write that story. I think I'm going to go put that. You know, I think I'm going to follow his lead on this. I think people would be interested in knowing how things kind of came around and how things didn't come around at Steiner because – Everybody always sees me with a picture of Derek Jeter or, you know, doing something with this athlete or this or that athlete or Muhammad Ali, whatever. But they don't know the days I was in the parking lot waiting for players to come outside just to get a phone number or sending out mailings to one in the morning hoping players would answer. And I thought I thought he did a great job. You know, I'm glad you brought that up, Jeff, because he did a phenomenal job in his book really outlining, what, you know, 
the, the truth about the, the pain and the, and the failures and the, the hiccups. One of my favorite lines is, don't let a bump in the road put you on the side of the road. And I think that's really true with Tony at Zappos, and I think that's been true for me. He's like, you're going to hit some bumps in the road, but can you fight through it and get through it? Do you have the resilience? Do you have the commitment? In some cases, even the cash. And he, in some cases, he used every dollar he had, which is great. Yeah, he did. Absolutely true. As I, I am kind of fond of saying, Brandon, the road to heaven goes through hell. And unless you're willing to, to go through there, you're not going to make it. It's, it's not easy, like you said, waiting out in the rain, waiting for a player to come out, sending out mailings till 1 a.m., you know, just trying to, hoping somebody will respond. That's the realities of business sometimes. Absolutely. That's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Brandon, I've, I've really enjoyed the chat with you. How do people learn about you? I know you've got a website. You've got a wonderful book. You've got a business. Where do, where do you recommend viewers go well, to learn about I would say, you? And I would say three things. First of all, my first book, by the way, the business playbook, is just great for you. Know, you have a kid in college, high school. You're kind of stuck. You know, you're out of school a few years. You're kind of stuck. I love my first book. The second book is, is a great read, and you, know, you got to have balls. It's about nerve, and it's, it's really about value proposition and all those lessons I learned. If you go to brandonsteiner.com, if you don't do anything from listening to this conversation, which, you know, some people just don't, go to brandonsteiner.com register for my blog because that's where the brain, you know, that's where I'm putting all these crazy things that are going on in my brain, but also the relationships I have with some of the cool people. I'm able to kind of extract some of those success. I kind of call it secrets in the sauce, and I put that on paper. And you can get my blog. You can register, and you'll get my blog four or five times a week. We do a lot of contests. I love Love giving things away. So, you know, SteinerSports.com is if you want to buy the ultimate Christmas gift, the holiday gift. There's no website. So I don't care if you go or you don't go because everybody goes. So eventually, if you want to get a great sports gift, you will go. But it's there's no website that has the kind of quality and the unusual products, the distinct unusual products like SteinerSports.com has. But if you want to get a little slice of where my head's at, or find out more about the book, or find out more about me speaking, any of that stuff. Just go to brandonsteiner.com. You'll, you'll you'll find your you'll get you'll get a sense of where I'm coming from. And I do respond. So you know when you when you Facebook me, or I, I'm one of those guys that like this. I wrote this blog about uh you know breaking up is a lose lose proposition, and you got to do it the right way. And this guy says, tell my ex-wife. So, you know, so I, I I said to him, I said, hey. You know, if you would have treated your wife a little nicer, if you were more apologetic when you went through the breakup, she wouldn't have taken half your money and left you. So, you know, I respond, like, don't come out me. You know, bring it. But, you know, I'm ready. To, let's go. I'm like, you know, no problem. I, I respond. You know, I love my clients and customers. I'm very, very, very grateful to have a fan base and people that support Steiner. But I'm always ready to tangle up and share my ideas and thoughts and vice versa. Always looking to listen and hear some of the viewers and and some of the clients that approach me. Great. Brandon, I, I've been this. You've got a lot of things on the wall behind you. Which one of those is your favorite? Can you show it to us? Well, it's a good question. I mean, this what I love about this red piece here is, is the Bobby Knights that, uh, when, you know, when my time on earth is gone and my, sure. my activities here are past, I want them to bury me upside down. So my kids <laughs> kiss my ass. I love that. You know, we're right now in the middle of doing the Bob Knight auction on SteinerSports.com from his, oh. t his sweaters and everything, so that's a lot of fun. And um, let's see if you can see this here. You can see that here. I love that Patrick Ewing uh, shot there where he's got his arms raised. You sure. see the Michael Jordan. And that's a great piece when Mark Messier played on this uh, – Outdoor rink in Canada. That was kind of cool. You see the picture of Muhammad Ali there uh, wow. on the bottom. Muhammad Ali and Derek Jeter at the All Star game in Houston. That's kind of cool. Yeah, you've got uh, a lot of great things. I tell my guys, like, if everybody gets sick and they don't want to buy anything from Steiner, I want to take all this stuff home. Unfortunately, it's 38,000 SKUs, but I still love everything. Yeah, great, great. Here's here's mine. This is a signed picture of Joe Montana against USC. <laughs> That's a guy there. 
Who is the defensive guy? I don't know. Number 99 for USC. But we'll have to think about that. Yeah. We got to find that out. But that's a great shot. It really is a nice shot. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Well, Brandon, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. You've been a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed chatting with you. And uh, we'll and have to do one quick thing before I leave. If you go to my Facebook and leave me a message, all right, I'll tell you what, if you go and register for my blog right now, the first 10 people that go to my blog, thebrandonsnyder.com, I'll send you a free book. So That's great. the first yeah. 10 people that go to my blog and write down, that you, you're watching your show, you, you, you're watching Jeff, I'll send you a free book. Okay, so use the keyword Jeff when you type it in. And go to brandonsteiner.com. First 10, get a free book from Brandon. Got to make it fun. I mean, it's, it's an Absolutely. ethical book. But by the way, you 10 people, all you have to do is you got to go to Amazon, right? Or have to. <laughs> My brother's got to ask. There you go. All right. I want to thank Brandon Steiner for being our guest on the show and remind everyone that the first 10 people to go to brandonsteiner.com and register for the blog, sign up for the blog, get a free copy of this book, you got to Have Balls by Brandon Steiner. Before we go, we've got to thank our sponsors because they pay the bills for us. Avatage is a great video content marketing company that you should check out at avatage.com. Digital Ethos is marketing, education, and nonprofit. Great content at digitalethos.org. So go there too. Communication Strategy Group is a PR firm, brand telling. So if you need to teach your people how to speak to the media or you just want to promote your company, go to communicationstrategygroup.com. Eloqua is the number one revenue performance management software company in the world, the largest public company, great company, and lastly, Watchitude provides this platform that we use for the show. Great streaming content, TV, that's how we do the TV-like show. Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern time at marketingmadesimple.tv, as well as many, many other sites like Social Media Today, Business to Community, digitalethos.org, CMO.com, and many other sites. So look for the show every Thursday at your favorite site. And we'll see you next time on Marketing Made Simple TV.